As seen on TV products are all the rage, but how do you know which ones are super and which ones are stinkers? That's easy, we're going to tell you. Today we're going to take a look at some tech gadgets, and first up is MagnaVision. It's got a bold claim on the box saying that it will enlarge your screen by 300%, and it's portable enough to take on planes, trains, and automobiles, and buses. So let's bust into this heavy-duty packaging and pull out this flimsy plastic piece of MagnaVision. It's black plastic and it's got a magnifying screen on it and a little stand where you can stand it up. Won't be too stable on that bumpy bus ride though. So we'll set this thing up and kill the lights. And I'm going to be using my iPhone 8. No, I haven't upgraded past that because I don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a phone. Thank you very much. So some video here of my puppy Jeter and let's see how it looks. Well, it, it looks larger. I don't know if it's 300% larger, and you almost have to get directly in front of it to get a good view of this. So, I, you know, I just can't see lugging this thing around. So you might be better off spending your money on getting an eye exam or some good reading glasses. Unfortunately, the MagnaVision is a stinker. Everybody loves music, so if you put boom in front of your product, that means it must be badass, like the Boom Cube. It's claimed to be a lil speaker with big sound. Well, we'll be the judge of that. So let's dig into the packaging here and pull out this sleeve that contains the Boom Cube. And on the back, there's some other helpful information that uh, kind of tells us that you can clip them everywhere. It has a built-in lithium battery, and you can connect it to any electronic device with a standard 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Inside, you'll find a short, and I mean short, USB cable for charging. They couldn't afford to give you a, like a one foot long cable. And on the back of this, there's the three and a half millimeter jack that just kind of is plugged around the edge of this. And there is a USB port and a power on and off switch. As you can see, this cube is pretty small, so I'll be curious to hear how booming it is, so let's test it out. But first, we gotta charge this little pipsqueak, so I'm gonna use the USB adapter for my phone, plug it into an extension cord, plug the USB cable into that, and plug it into the back of the boom cube, and our red light is lit, and it's charging. Be right back. Okay, it's done charging. So we'll unplug the USB cable and set it to the side and I'm going to grab my phone and we're going to do a comparison with my iPhone 8 and the Boom Cube. The Boom Cube is powered on so here we go. Well initially it sounds a little on the tinny side. It might have a little bit of volume but it's definitely tinny, almost zero bass. Now let's unplug the boom cube from my phone and check out the stereo speakers on the iPhone. Now the iPhone is not quite as loud or teeny sounding, but I can definitely hear some mid-range and some bass in the iPhone, which I really could not pick up on the boom cube. So while the boom cube is a little cute and it's got a furry outer body, it also has a uh, little carabiner that you can clip on your keychain and bring it with you. But I think for the 15 bucks for the sound you're getting out of this thing, I really don't think that the Boom Cube is a big boomer. In fact, I think it's just a stinker. Ever since there have been units of measure, man has been measuring things for all kinds of reasons, of course. Rulers are common, of course, and the tape measure is a super versatile tool because it can measure long items and it fits in a small package. So let's take a look at a new way to measure with the Measure King. According to the packaging, this is the new easy way to measure, and it measures in three different ways, which we're about to find out what they are. But first, it's time to break out the scissors because this has one of the foolproof shoplifting preventable packaging that you have to cut open and get into. So once we're inside, we have our Measure King device. Now, according to the instructions, it takes four AAA batteries, 
We gotta remove these three screws on the back of the Measure King and then put in our four AAA batteries. And then replace the screws to the back. Now there's three buttons on the side. One is a mode button, which changes the different ways that it measures. You have a power button and then also a clear button, which will clear the memory. The cord mode has a retractable string that pulls out from inside the Measure King. And you can use that to do your standard long measurements. The handy thing about a cord is that it allows you to measure round objects like the head of Tor Johnson. And it'll hold the display when you're done so you can see what diameter skull you've got. And of course, my favorite is the laser mode. This is handy because you can just point it at a long distance away and it'll give you the measurement. You don't need to have access with a string or a measuring tape or a ruler. It'll give you an accurate measurement just using the laser. And the third mode is the roller mode. Now it's got a little wheel on the bottom here. You have to press and hold the measure button as you glide the wheel along a surface and it'll give you the measurement of that surface. And the Measure King will give you measurements in inches and centimeters and feet. Now the only thing that threw me about the Measure King is that on the packaging it says sonic measurement. Now as far as I can tell, there is no measurement by sound. I'm not really sure why they put it on there, maybe because it sounds cool, but there is no sonic measurement on the Measure King. Well, overall, the Measure King is a pretty cool device, and I think it could definitely replace a tape measure, so the Measure King gets a super rating. Since the dawn of fire, or since man discovered it, there have been plenty of ways to get a flame. Lighters, matches, even magnesium fire starter would do the trick. But now we've got something new. It's the Bell & Howell Tack Lighter. This thing claims to start a fire without any fluid or flame, and it also claims to be wind and water resistant. So let's test it out. Time to break into this high security packaging again with a pair of scissors up the side and across the top, and we'll pull out our tack lighter and some other junk, including directions and another small USB cable. So this has to be charged, I'm sure, so we will plug it in, and you see the little red light well, that means it's charging. So we'll let that charge and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And the tack lighter is charged, as you can see by this blue light that indicates the charging level. And removing the little cover reveals the charging element. And there's a little black safety slide switch that flips up and pushes out the igniter. And then there's a small power button. And you press that and it should light up. And sure enough, you can see it's creating an arc, and that's what's expected to light your stuff. So let's try it out on this candle, and we press the power button, and it arcs, and lights the candle without a problem. But the ultimate test is, will it light my stinking Seth card? And let's see. Yes, stinking Seth is smoking. One of the claims is that it's waterproof, so taking a squirt bottle filled with water, I squirt it all over the tack lighter, and with the same candle, press the power button, and yep, it is waterproof to a certain degree. It did light the candle. So what about this windproof test? Well, I set up a little fan blowing at the candle and ignited the tack lighter, and you can see it's actually trying to light the candle, but the wind from the fan is blowing the flame out as soon as it lights. So that claim is met. The tack lighter does actually work in the wind. For me, the real deal is no fluid and no flame. So we'll give the tack lighter a super thumbs up. And finally on our list of as seen on TV tech gadgets, it's clear Vision HD. Don't pay hundreds of dollars a year for cable or satellite TV again. That's the claim, saving hundreds of dollars a year. So busting into the cheap cardboard packaging reveals the Clear Vision HD antenna, an instruction sheet, and a couple of suction cups, I guess, to stick it to a window. Oh, and this has a coax cable on the end, so make sure your TV has that connection if you want to save hundreds of dollars. I hooked it up to the back of my TV, and then I stuck the Clear Vision HD antenna on the wall for testing purposes using tape, and then went through the programming. And sure enough, I got a massive amount of channels. 20. And as I checked out those channels, I found out that half of them were just breaking up digitally. So it wasn't really doing a very good job and the bare minimum of 20 channels. So I moved the antenna to the window, which is another recommended spot, and reprogrammed, and I got 
20 channels. Looking in the instructions, I may have found the problem. It says, for best results, keep the HD clear vision antenna within 35 miles of the broadcast towers. So I'm either going to have to move or get a much longer cable. So unfortunately, the clear vision HD antenna gets a big fat stinker. So there's our As Seen on TV tech gadgets tested. If you enjoyed this video, give it a good thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. And click the screen for some other gizmos I've tested. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.